Welcome back, Dirt to Dust faithful. It is time for another episode of Dirt to Dust presented by Outlaw Offroad. And we are going to take the opportunity this week to build a little bit. Uh, Caleb had a really good idea that apparently there was some stuff in our episode with with Jeremy Purick from Rock Holler, which is a great episode. That was a lot of fun. Uh, we got to get him back on for yeah, some was. for some non mob mob Moab stuff. Um, but that when we it seemed like when we were talking, we had several times it came up where we were talking about people kind of being really kind of, I guess, beginners or not maybe quite ready for maybe what Pritchett threw at him. I know that was kind of a, a theme mm -hmm. through that. So, uh, Caleb, good on you for coming up with the idea about just kind of doing a general episode geared towards um, new off-road vehicle owners, mostly off-road related, right? But um, but you know, some of this, some of these little, some of these topics might, um, uh, might kind of flow over into the non off-roader, but just doing an episode mm -hmm. based on those type of people. I think it's a great idea. Um, we did do some of this, like in the let's get after it over on the outlaw off-road YouTube channel last year. Uh, but those were really short, um, really specific, a lot of beginner technical stuff, but I like the yeah. idea here that you had Caleb doing kind of just a more generalized, um, you know, totally new day one type stuff. Those are some of my favorite rides, man. I really like doing oh, yeah. beginner rides, you know, I've done that, you know, all over. I really like that, um, you know, taking stock vehicles out and kind of seeing the, the progression of people from, you know, day one, morning one to day two, day three, whatever, uh, when they start realizing, right, what they can do and what their vehicle's capable of. So I think it's going to be a great episode. Looking forward to, uh, to getting into it. So without further ado, let's get it going. When other people see dirt, you see glory. And when you see a vehicle for the first time, your first thought is not how pretty it is, but how much abuse can it take? This is Dirt to Dust, presented by Outlaw Off-Road. If it's anything off-road and dirty, we probably like it, and we're probably talking about it. You'll get industry info, tech talk, and interviews with the biggest and best in the industry. Let's do it. This is Dirt to, to Dust. Us. And now your hosts, Doug Langford and Caleb Forbes. <laughs> And welcome back. Like Doug said, uh, we've got a pretty cool episode. And I think I say that all the time, but I think a lot of our episodes are cool. Um, I, I really do enjoy what we talk about and discuss on these. Uh, the podcast is becoming more than I thought it would be, to be honest with you. And I'm, I'm here for it. I'm stoked. Um, we are we are definitely attracting more of a crowd of beginners which I'm totally fine for. Uh, I would much rather someone who's very new to off-roading, new to Jeeps, new to overlanding, whatever, uh, get involved because they're listening to a podcast like this and hearing some good advice versus, um, let's just be honest, Facebook group advice. Uh, yeah. yeah so today is uh, is definitely geared a little more towards that. And, and you and JP definitely said some things uh, last week that uh, kind of stuck with me. I took a little bit of note on it and, uh, yeah, I kind of want to talk about those things. So one of the first things that he said uh, was mentioning covering the brakes. Mm. And uh, you you backed it up and you called it two foot driving right. or two footing. Right. Right. Uh, same thing. Uh, so I kind of want to take a minute and explain, go a little bit further into depth what that is, why you should do it, why it's a valuable skill to learn. Uh, and I think you're a good person to talk about that. You've got more wheeling experience than I do at this point. So, uh, so let's get right into that. And first of all, like, what is it and why is it important? So in its simplest form, and, and I'll backtrack a little bit and, and hundred percent agree with you. Um, we are attracting new noobs a little bit more. And I also don't think that's a bad thing because if you think about it, uh, and I do this too, you know, when I, I recently bought a, um, I, I added to my mountain bike stable an electric mountain bike. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I was kind of a purist. I said I was never going to do it. And because I got, I got a really nice non e bike. And I was like, you know, it would enable me to do things easier, kind of like during the workday. If I want to go out for a quick ride and I want to get some distance in, I can do some things, you know, maybe look trail together, something like that. So there's a lot of reasons um, 
to do it. And then I, I tested one and did it, but immediately I'm not real well versed in that world. I'm just not. Um, so I went to YouTube. <laughs> I did what everybody yeah, like freaking does, right? Do. And and I became an e, you know an e bike noobster. And so in doing that, I actually was able to to find a couple of channels that had some good information that just seemed reliable from the jump. You could just, you can just tell mm -hmm. when you listen to people. Uh, you could tell if they're full of crap or not. Um, you know, it doesn't matter. It, it, it's it's not even really what they say; it's how they say it. So you can tell. So I did that too. And, I, and I've done it in so many things. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I, I mean, I do it every day to learn how to do off-road stuff. I don't know nothing. So I just go to YouTube and watch YouTube videos. Um, <laughs> but it's absolutely true. So I 100% agree. And like you said, I'm here for it. I think it's great because if you know everything already, you're not going to, why you're not watching this anyway. And if you are, you're just like, those no. guys don't know what they're talking about. So I digress. So two footing or covering the break to get to your question. I do call it two footing simply because. Um, you're using two feet, <laughs> yeah. left foot on the brake, uh, right foot on the gas. And basically what that is, how I explain it when I'm spotting people, you know, I don't have too much time to get super technical when I'm standing on a rock is I'm basically telling them to mash the brake with their left foot. Give me a certain RPM on their engine. Now that RPM might change if it's a Hemi or if it's a whatever, but I'm going to tell them a number. Hey, give your RPMs about 2,500. And then you're basically going to let the Jeep drive with the brake. And that does a couple of big things. Number one, what, what, what JP said is it preloads that, that drivetrain in one direction. Mm -hmm. It takes any of the slop, any of the, the engagement um, out of bearings, out of the drive shaft, out of the engine. out of the, it, it just loads everything up to go one way. So you're not going to be, you know, it's not that, that slap in with um, when metal touches metal. Because obviously that's, yeah. that's not ideal. Now, is that going to break something every time? No, but this is we're talking about. It's going to help long term, which is a good thing. We want that. We want all the good. We want the we want long parts, long term parts to last for long time time frames, long term time time right. term. That yeah, so that's always a good thing, <laughs> uh, whether it's a term or a time. The longer is the better because parts aren't cheap, man. You know, it's not cheap to fix stuff. Um, it's not cheap to replace parts, and that's only gotten worse in the last several years. So. Why not do everything we can to do uh, to, to keep those parts in a vehicle, a Jeep, a Toyota, whatever, for as long as possible? So preloading the drivetrain right. is one thing. The other thing is you're taking out that jumpiness. Um, mm -hmm. You know, you see it, you, and you can look at any off-road video, even experience wheelers, myself included. It just Even at low speed, the difference between four miles an hour and zero is huge. Well, the difference yeah. between 40 and 45 is nothing. That's five-mile-an-hour difference. But when you're going really slow and you're crawling – um, you know, that difference between stop and go is, is pretty pronounced and mm -hmm. just simple things like stabbing the brakes to go, you know, too much can roll a vehicle hitting, yeah. hitting the gas too hard on a vertical can roll back a vehicle. You know, there's little things that can make that different. So if you're, if you've got constant engine speed and you're just driving it with the brake, you're going to be a lot smoother on the pedal. It's kind of like why we used to try to use throttle, uh, throttle controllers and you kind of still can to a point. And we'd kind of put them in economy mode to dumb down the throttle. Yep. Basically, we're dumbing down the throttle. So um, that's just the way to do it. And if you look at like race car drivers, even like rally guys, if you ever look at these cameras they've got in the um, in like the floorboards, their feet oh, are yeah. always on pedals. It's never just my right foot mm -hmm. to the brake to the. It's never that. It's never that. No, what, left foot's always covering Absolutely. clutch or, or brake. Um, right foot's always covering gas. And, I, and I'm the same way, like always working. I'm, I would love to, and maybe I will for Crandon. I'll stick a camera in the, in the footwell, a 4699, <laughs> man, the feet don't stop moving, man. That left mm -hmm. foot gets a workout. Like my left foot gets a bigger workout than my right foot. You know, my right foot's on the gas. Yeah. It's on or it's off. Yeah. And in 99, there's not a whole lot of, um, feathering. It's either, you know, especially at a short course race, I'm either off the gas or I'm floor pinned and I'm using yeah. the brake to control traction. I'm using the brake control turn entry, turn exit. And it's just, man, it's a wild, crazy dance. So, um, yeah. that's at the extreme end, obviously, but you know, for the beginner, it's just covering that brake a little bit. And then you let off the vehicle moves, you break it down the vehicles, you know, the vehicle stops. So just driving it with the brake would be another term for, you know, you're covering the brake. Obviously that just means your left foot's over the brake. I go a little more in depth and just call it two foot. So you're actually getting mm -hmm. that left foot engagement. You're not just covering, 
Um, but yeah, you know, Google that YouTube that you can see what I'm talking about. It's, it's everywhere. It's race cars are most prevalent. Um, it should be more prevalent off road. Unfortunately, it's not. There's a lot of people that were like two foot. What JP made the same comment. Um, so I think that's something, and you know, people should get out there and practice, get at your local, you'll see, you need to practice that, get on an obstacle and play with it, you know, get on a safe little, you know, get on a little ledge where there's no danger of flipping over anything like that and, and, and play with Mm -hmm. it. Right. So yeah, definitely a good skill. And I would even go, yeah. And I would even go as far as implementing that into your daily drive routine. This is as weird as it sounds. The first time do this in like not a crowded area, maybe like a, like a, you know, back road or uh Na- slow neighborhood or something like that where you know it's just not a lot of people uh you'll realize how weird if you've never done this before it'll feel so weird to use your left foot on the brake while your right foot's on the gas but doing that even in your normal daily routine will actually start training you to do that off road and it doesn't feel so weird when you do it the first time uh you kind of already got a feel for it you kind of already know like that left foot kind of already has some muscle memory of brake pressure you can't just stab the brake i mean because you, you're gonna stop um so and those who drive a manual will probably understand this a little bit better just because you're already used to working that left foot on uh, that left leg but yeah start doing that in your daily drive um start start covering the brake a little bit just to kind of help smooth your your transitions on and off from stoplights and then once you bring that into the off-road world um, those things will feel, start feeling a little bit more natural, but yeah, just like Doug said, um, doing that a couple times, you're going to f- see and feel the difference of how smooth you climb up obstacles. And it most likely is going to make that obstacle easier because you're not just rocking it back and forth. You're not jumping off of a line. You can very steadily control what you're doing. And that's the whole point of, of that entire thing is being able to have more control over the vehicle and not just you know, taking a shotgun approach and saying, oh, I'm going to try it this way. And I don't know how much gas to give it. Um, if you're feathering it out and feeling it out, like you're, you're, you're watching your traction in live time, just and you're seeing what's going on, but you have full control over that. So that is a super important skill to learn. And uh, I encourage every new person in off-road to look into that. We see a lot of rollovers, accidents, or, or breaks happen because you're not preloading anything in the drivetrain. You're just stabbing it and, seeing what happens and uh it's not fun it's not good it's not a good way to treat the parts that you just spent a lot of money on full legal disclaimer um, caleb is not talking about power braking burnouts or drifting just just so no, we're legally no, no, covered no, I would, although i am I here would, uh, for all of that <laughs> professional driver close course i'm here for that's all not this. what we're talking uh, about yeah, I, don't go out there and get I'm caught drifting about... and send me the bill for the ticket back well caleb said in my daily drive no stop however um if you did want to learn how to do a burnout, that's a really good way to just hundred percent. That's all I'm going to say about that. From <laughs> legal standpoint, we are not advocating. Uh, I'm not advocating behavior. the use of donuts or burnouts. <laughs> God, that, that hurt my even soul to say that, that first, I'm not advocating that. Yeah, even that's that's probably the first thing I'm going to do when the LJ's done because it's got these tiny little. I, I think I put like. Don't hurt that little motor. Hard, like. Don't hurt like that little motor. Inch tires. That poor <laughs> five, little LJ. Five thirty eight. Just let let. I'm gonna I'm gonna treat the four of like crap and stuff. And <laughs> if that LJ knew what the way you talked about it and what your plans were for it, it would just it would quit just life. Combust. It'd be like you know yeah, what? I'm done. Stop. I'm out of here. Poof. I'm gone. I'm out. <laughs> I mean, it served me well for a little while. Uh, Jeep. But yeah, I mean, eight eight cylinders are a must in the next. I'm gonna I'm gonna get the wheel. I'm I'm gonna put one good season on it and then. On the downtime, not driving so it like that, you get won't. That thing swapped out. Uh, just, just a quickie. Mm-hmm. Just a quickie we'll see. Now. That's it. We'll see. There'll uh, be video, everybody. But, I'm sure. Uh, no worries. Speaking of spending good money on parts that you don't want to break, uh, that kind of leads me into a second point uh, that I really want to address. Um, I don't know if you saw the Outlaw Offered reels that I posted uh, on Monday of this week. Um, oh I, yeah, those were I had this. I had this idea uh, and I saw it from a coffee shop of all places. And they were like, what's your, um, what's your controversial opinion about coffee or about whatever. And then someone would say it, but then they would show like what they were doing too, which was kind of cool. And I got this idea. I was like, Ooh, there's a lot of controversial opinions in the off-road world. So um, let's, let's go ask, let's have each shop ask the text of like what their most controversial opinion is. Nobody asked me. And, uh, 
<laughs> you were you were pretty busy this I, week. I was, so. but I, I actually got I the question Shane later. I'm doing this. So Shane in yeah. Greensboro called me at the at office later that day after they'd already done all theirs, and he goes, "What's your most controversial off road pick or topic?" And I'm like, "What are you talking about?" He's like, "Like controversial <laughs> off road hot take," and I'm like. Uh, I don't know, 40s are for people who can't drive. And it just came out. <laughs> and I had no idea that's what you were doing. And he goes, well, Caleb is you know, doing all this with the hot takes and all this. I'm like, oh, okay, that's a pretty cool idea. Like, didn't at that time, didn't know how you were going to do that. And then I saw all the reels later. And uh, obviously, my my hot take didn't make it in. But, yeah, there were some good ones on oh, there. He didn't, he didn't send me a video of that. There was no video. If, if, I, had vid- yeah, there was no if video. I had video of that, trust me, that would have gone in. <laughs> uh but, but no, uh, they were good. They were hilarious. Fr- stemming from that, though, uh, Ben Mayer in Charlotte, um, he he looked right at the camera and said, Amazon's not an off-road shop. And I was like, ooh. Yeah. <laughs> yep, I saw that one. I saw that one. I was like, ooh, straight yeah. to the point, sir. That one's going to hit uh, a lot of people so in the fields. Ben, if you're listening to this, thank you for this idea, Good sir. job, Ben. Uh, but that is this is something I definitely want to talk about. Amazon is not an off-road shop. Amazon does not sell quality products especially when they're made from overseas places um it's just yes they're cheap but they're cheap for a reason and they're half the time they don't fit great and when they do fit okay they don't last great because the metal is cheap the powder coat's cheap it rusts it rusts from the inside it's there's no support behind it and let's be honest like it's 2024. We need to start supporting the companies that work their asses off in this country that are paying employees, paying insurance, paying everything they've got to do to create jobs in the U.S. I'm a huge proponent of this, but um, yeah, quit. Well, I don't want to. Some things are okay on Amazon. I'm not going to trash Amazon, uh, but for the most part, it's just not going to have the quality there. If you're hitting a certain budget, I get it, but try to save up a little bit to support an American company. Um, there are so many awesome American companies out here working their butts off every single day to provide some cool products. Uh, the least we could do is, is try to save up to buy those things, you know, uh, get the customer sor- support behind it. Um, there's just, there's a lot of reasons I can go in this and I want to let Doug kind of have the microphone at this too, but yeah, just don't let, let's, let's start the revolution of getting away from, from going to Amazon as your first spot to to buy stuff for your jeep or truck or whatever you've got so i'm going to disagree with you a little bit uh okay, i mean the general premise of amazon is not an off-road shop yeah that's 100 percent accurate uh however i'm a self i'm a self-admitted amazon prime princess i buy a lot of stuff from amazon not for my oh i do too my vehicles of course not yeah, not for vehicles, but I've having a lot of stuff been in the off road industry Great. for uh, you know a few days now, um, I think that Amazon serves a purpose, and there are now several companies that are reputable. There are several companies that have basically kind of given in and said, you know what, I have a dealer network, I can sell to off road shops, I can sell to warehouse distributors, but I'm also going to have. An Amazon store. And I'm not going to go out and name names because there's, there's no problem with that if they want to do that. So, yeah, if we, we all know if, you know, let's, you know, let's just we had Jeremy on here last week. Let's let's pick on rock crawler. If I go to Amazon and type in rock crawler lift kit, most of my results are going to be rock crawler knockoffs. You know, the Amazon right. algorithm, they know what I'm looking for. Their, their AI, mm-hmm. their servers, they know what I'm looking for. So they're going to put something in front of me that is the that is going to do the best for them while still meeting what they think i want um yeah. they know that i want a they want to know that i want a lift kit for a jl or a jk or whatever so they're going to put something in front of me that's that's pretty much a knockoff and what do i mean by knockoffs um everybody says well what you know it's not really but they don't really know what they're talking about when they say knockoff companies and u.s companies do this too companies will buy product um i know for a fact that a a fairly reputable company just a couple of weeks ago put in an order and he wasn't very smart about it. He went to another suspension company's website and just put in an order, just ordered a kit. Wow. And the owner of that company, it came up in a conversation because yeah, I couldn't believe this guy did this. And I was like, mm, no nope, refund. Don't fulfill order. So people do that. Um, where it is, where you see the knockoff stuff, like the Asia stuff, SEMA is really bad for this. Um, mm-hmm. 
you know, the Chinese companies, the Asian companies, um, Philippines, all of them. <laughs> They come over and they start taking pictures and they start making notices and they start taking measurements. And that's a lot of the reason, too, your fitment is a little bit off. They'll get it close based on their notes and their pictures and their tape measure stuff. But they're also trying to get in and get out quick before somebody comes and, you know, hits them in the you know throat, punches them. So that's a lot yeah. of reason for for that. You've also got people that just really aren't as good at SolidWorks or CAD or the machines aren't as good. They're just not going to. Could China be as good as we are at doing things? Of course they could be. They have mm -hmm. the money to buy the machines that we have. They have the money to pay people what we put. They have that. They can do it. But, you know, kudos to them. They know their place in the market. We're going to do it as cheap as humanly possible. We're going to get by with as minimum as we can, knowing that that's a proven model because it will sell because people will buy the Odro or Tiger automotive bumper on Amazon. And, and, that's, and they're not going to stop. Do I like that people are going to do that? No, I don't. But I also know that they're not going to be a customer of a legit off-road shop either. I already know this. Right. So do I, I could, I could get pissed about that and talk crap and, you know, I can't believe you would do that. Or I can be like, you know what? Thank you for not wasting my time. Thank you for not wasting yeah, the time true. of, of my employees. Thank you for not wasting the time uh, of trying to get us to hit some magical budget that we're not going to hit with the stuff that we sell. Thank you, because, you know, these are people that are two things, generally. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. They are people that are only caring about a budget. They're, they're only there for aesthetics. And they don't care about they don't care about service after the sale. Or at least they don't think they care about service after the sale when they're making right. that purchase. Now, a lot of people in Facebook groups will, will bear this out. A lot of people realize that later. Um, Facebook is replete with stories of, well, I bought this bumper and, and yeah, the metal's thin and, or yeah, the powder coat started to rust off. Yeah. There's stories like that everywhere, but it doesn't, it's not, it's not prevalent enough for people to care because a lot of people will just kind of work that math out. And for them, it is only a math problem. It is, I can buy this bumper for 200. I can buy that bumper for 600. Even if this bumper starts to rust, I could get a little sandpaper on it. I'm a DIY guy. I can go to YouTube, blah, blah, blah. I got some Milwaukee tools in my garage and I'll spray paint it. That's fine for them. I'm never mm -hmm. going to get that customer. It's just not going to happen. Maybe down the road. Yeah, that's a good point. Maybe, uh, but I'm never going to get them. So for that, um, yeah, I mean, Amazon's going to get that. eBay's going to get that. And and to an extent, um, you know, I, we're always, it's like politics, right? There's there's one side of the argument that is 100%. I want American made. I want this, this. And then the other side of the argument is I don't really care. I just want to hit a price point. And really what you're battling over is that that's in the middle. It's, it's like every election. It's like everything, everything on Facebook. There's a hardcore one side. There's a hardcore the other side. And then everybody that's kind of in the middle and the hardcore guys are going after each other. Right. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I don't I'm not. And I say that owning owning and then starting outlaw off road that, you know, thank you, Amazon, for some of that. Uh, and leaving us time okay. to fight for the stuff in the middle. You know, we're always we're already going to get the customer that understands what an what a local off-road shop means and what we offer and what we bring to the table we're going to get that customer um and we, we may compete with another off-road shop for that customer but an off-road shop's going to get that customer on the flip side of that same coin we're never going to get the guy who just will not spend more than a 199.99 on his bumper you know he wants two-day delivery he wants to you know film his own little youtube video with an unboxing in his driveway installing his tiger auto bumper um i'm never going to get that customer so I will let Amazon and eBay have that customer and, and let us focus on what we can focus on, which is getting and retaining the customers that we can get and retain from that standpoint. So um, is it an off-road shop? Absolutely not. Is there a place for it? 100% there is. Um, even little cheap stuff that, you know, American companies aren't going to make. There is stuff that American companies just don't make. You know, let's be honest. Trim stuff and accessory stuff is generally not something that American companies are going to make. Lighting is generally not something that American companies are going to make. Lighting, yeah, that's true. You know, even in the lighting industry, I know a lot of great people that are in the LED lighting industry. They'll be the first to tell you they're not making their stuff in their in their garage. They're ordering it third yeah. party from somewhere. And this goes for everybody. This is every LED company out there. I won't name names, but just name one. Other than Diode Dynamics, who does make a lot of their stuff here, and other than like a company, a niche company with product lights and stuff like that, like a DCS lighting. Those companies are few and far between. 
that are actually doing and sourcing and making here. By and large, 99% of them are not. So, but at that point, you're buying from an individual in the US and then it goes back to service. Am I going to buy from yeah. this person because I know this person or they have a reputation? They're going to stand behind the product because you just know in the world of LEDs, you're going to need a warranty at some point. It's just going to happen. Mm -hmm. So who can I go to that work? Who do I trust that's going to be here in a year when I need that light replaced? Who do I have? Who do I trust and know in the in the industry that goes to the shows and is going to be around? You know, not going to go like what, what was the, the, the high beam off road route? The guy that just kind of whoop, off he went into the night. Unfortunately, that happens. Yeah. You know, unfortunately, that does it happen does. in that lighting world. Now, that wasn't the lighting company's fault. That was his fault. He just he was just bad at business. Um, and there's lots of other companies out there that are good. Um, so, yeah, if you know, it seems to be a common theme here. As long as you know what you're doing and you educate yourself, <laughs> I, you know, I don't have a problem with it. Um, so use Amazon what Amazon is there for and use the off-road shop what the off-road shop is there for. And, you know, there's plenty of stuff for all of us to do because, again, Amazon's never going to get our hardcore off-road shop customer. And we're never going to get the hardcore budget. You know, I'm not going to spend more one penny more than I have to customers. It's just not going to happen. Um, so we'll just fight over the ones in the middle. Yeah, no, that's fair. I didn't think of it like that. Um, I was thinking just in my head, I was thinking strictly the the knockoff crowd, um, the people that are imitating American products that are, you know, have nothing to do with it and no support. Uh, but no, that brings up a very good point, though. Um, what? What are some of the like the cheap overhyped products that you would avoid though? Anything that has to do with safety. I think mm -hmm. anything that has to do with safety, avoid the knockoff, right? Um, right? That's you know we talked about that with recovery gear. Don't don't skimp on recovery gear, right? Mm -hmm. Like just don't do that. Um, you know, um, if you're going to wheel, don't skimp on armor. Now, if you're never going to wheel, I, I can't stop you. You know, the difference, yeah, because the no, main difference, there's three real differences in armor that you're going to get. That's a knockoff for Asian versus American. Number one is the thickness of the steel, where mm -hmm. an American company will do um, three sixteenths or quarter. An Asian company will do one eighth to three quarter to three sixteenths. They're just going to drop yeah. it. Uh, and you don't think that makes a difference, but I'm here to tell you it does. Um, it does. The second thing is going to be how they coat it, uh, powder coat, eco paint, whatever. It is going to be inferior. It just is. Uh, and then the third thing would be the actual quality of the steel. Um, U.S. steel is much, much more regulated to be able to be called U.S. steel. Then so then, you know, Chinese steel. We talked uh, there's been a couple of videos where I've talked about inclusions and whatnot into the metal. Um, and China is just allowed to make steel that's just inferior. It just is. Is it still steel? Yeah, mostly it is. Is it better than the plastic bumper that comes on? most of the jeeps and and most vehicles um yeah 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 it is it's gonna hold up better um I, I, eighth inch steel is still better than plastic <laughs> it just is what it is yeah um, that's true you know maybe it bends more than a than a better bumper or whatever but i think if you're going to be on road all the time and you're never going to off road you're never going to hook a you know a, a soft shackle to a, a bumper that's cheap you're never going to do any of that stuff uh again we weren't going to you're not going to be an offer shop customer anyway. So go do you, right? And if you're willing to do the stuff that it takes to maintain the look and you're going to sand it down and repaint it, recode it and all that, okay, cool. But if you're actually going to use it, uh, then armor would be one. Um, and then, out again, anything safety, I just would not, under any circumstances, don't skimp on fire extinguishers, recovery gear, yeah. ropes, a winch, winch line, shackles, um, D-ring, any of that Soft stuff. Shackles. Just spend the money there. <laughs> If you're gonna save yeah. it, save it somewhere else. Don't skimp there. Just, just it, just don't yeah. do it. That breaks. People yeah. get hurt. Yeah, real hurt. Right. As we saw, I think it was a, um, it was a video we did earlier this year. It's probably one of our first podcasts. What we did with uh, Justin Andrews. Yep. We talked about um, the guy that, uh, and now not to say that was an inferior product. He actually said it was like a pretty decent product, but. I mean, we, you see firsthand of like what happens when one of those things do fail and it's not pretty. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, I would, I would agree with that. Um, lights kind of a dime a dozen on Amazon. Like, unfortunately, I don't, I don't think RGBW is ever going to go away anywhere. So, but I do like buying, where you can. even if it is the quote unquote cheap Chinese stuff, I do like the mm -hmm. idea of buying from a more local vendor. Um, mm -hmm. simply because you have that local point of contact, like you said, service after the sale, right? You're going to need right. service after the sale and led lights. It just is what it is. 
right? It just, yeah. It's just a it's thing. Not a like, let's just, it's not. I know they say, oh, it's 50000 No, it's not. Especially when you get into RGB and the boards and the inferior quality assurance that we're getting out of Asia, especially these days, you're, you're going to need that service after the sale. So I yeah. like the idea of buying from somebody, um, buying local or somebody that has their own QA, like a rigid, like a Baja Designs. But even on the budget yeah. side, you know, like a redeemed LED. I, you know, I know I'm very I, you know, I'm friends yeah. with Kyle over at Redeemed LED. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I know where those lights are coming from. Um, and I know I could probably go buy those lights similar to that somewhere else. But I like Kyle. Mm-hmm. Right. And I know yeah. Kyle. So and I know that if I have a problem, you know, he's a phone call or a text or a message away. And and, and Kyle's not a sponsor of this show or Redeemed LED. But no. I'm using that as an example because, you know, I see Kyle at shows. You know, I saw him at yeah. Myrtle Beach Jeep Jam last year. I know he was just at um, where we had a couple of shops at um, Western NC Jeep Fest. So, you know, <laughs> if I have a problem, you know, I have I have redeemed LED headlights in the 4 by You know, he sent me a pair of those, and it was the only set of headlights aftermarket that I've ever seen that I actually liked enough to pull out mm-hmm. OE LED lights. I was, it was, I that was says, shocked. That says something. <laughs> I was absolutely <laughs> shocked. That says something. So, you know, I have no problem being like, yeah, I, I know that light was made in China. I know that. There was no way I was getting yeah. a headlight uh, made here. It just wasn't going to happen. That wasn't just right. even more than an OE. Um, so, I, you know, I got that from Kyle, and it was a good light. But but on the flip side of that, if I have a problem, I don't have to worry about, oh, man, I bought it from Amazon and all this, or I bought it from eBay. I just shoot Kyle a message be like, hey, man, um, love the light, uh, but I had one stop working. And I'm covered. Mm-hmm. Right? It's taken yeah. care of. So – you know, even if even though I am kind of buying the Chinese stuff, I have that American local point of contact. And it's somebody that I know and gotten to have known through the industry. And that's not just special for me. That's anybody. Anybody listening can go buy a light from Redeemed LED. And they've got that same method of contact that me or you mm-hmm. or anybody in Outlaw would have. So I like that idea, too, which would be a knock on, you know, pull it away from Amazon. If you can buy it like that, do it. Um, yeah. You know, and again service after the sale that's one thing you do you definitely lose and some manufacturers if they find out you bought on amazon you don't get their warranty correct yeah, that's a thing yeah. yeah might be a very similar product or maybe even the same product but yeah you're not going to get the warranty and you're not going to get the customer service after the point which to me i will 100 percent base a purchase off of customer service and point of contact after the sale um overpriced yeah. um, to me that is way more important and, and or building a relationship with that company um maybe i can take some really cool pictures in cinema or maybe i can take a cool video one weekend when i'm out and send it to them and maybe they use it on their social media maybe they don't who cares uh but the idea of just building that relationship though is extremely important to me um because like you said those are the guys that you see at the shows those are guys yeah. that you see walking around those are guys they're involved see in the industry in everyday life yeah yeah. And um, I don't care who you are in this industry. Um, it's still a small industry and oh, yeah. people will recognize you and people know your face. And if you do them wrong, they're going to know that. And a, a customer is going to tell 10 times the amount of people about a bad experience than a good experience. Um, and I would like to be on the good experience side of that. <laughs> right. Uh, but speaking of building relationships, I think that kind of leads me into another point. Um, and that is building a relationship with your good local off-road shop. Um, I, I think there's something to be said. If you're not a hundred percent, a DIYer who, you know, refuses to let anyone else touch your Jeep, uh, you should be representing the off-road shop that's building and putting time and effort into, into your rig, um, share their stuff on, on social media. Like it, it costs nothing to do that. Like you don't have to go out and be a full rep or, you know, a, a brand ambassador or anything like that. But it costs zero dollars except for, you know, maybe 10 seconds of your time to share a social media post, to write a review, uh, post on your local club about the new upgrades the shop is installing for you. Shout them out. Like it, that goes farther. And this is just coming from my marketing mindset. Uh, that goes farther sometimes than the initial purchase does because that one person can, can bring in several new customers. Um, but also it's not just about acquiring customers. I just, I love the, the community building aspect. I feel like the stronger a community is, the more we can do, the more leverage we have, the more fun things we can do. Um, so 
that is definitely one of of my strong suits and i know you kind of feel very similar about that as well uh so i'm i'm going to kind of disagree with you again <laughs> Oh man! All I'm right. shocking you today. Yeah, this is what the show's for. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I don't, I, I don't know about that. I think, do I love people that give us good reviews and all of that? And do I ask for that? Yes, I do. Absolutely. Any business, any business is going to. Um, I do not feel any kind of way when somebody doesn't do it. Um, I yeah. don't look for, I don't look for people to post pictures and tag me. Do I like when they do it? Of course. Does it help us? Of course. Well, but how does it help us? Well, because if you're doing it, the hope and the, the hope and the dream is that you're out there generating more business for me, for me to make more money. So I don't know how I feel. Well, I do know how I feel. I'm not super uh, on getting people to do stuff for nothing. It's why we have a brand ambassador program for people like that. Um, you know, where we do, you know, all the way up, all the way up to including vehicles that are, that are branded outlaw in certain ways. And then some people are just, you know, you're a brand ambassador, you get 10% on parts or something like that. Of course we do that. Of course we have those programs. Um, any, any shop of any size or, or, or quality is going to have that. Uh, for me, however, um, I'm not going to do that. You know, I am. People have wondered before, you know, I go to, you know, go to events and somebody will give me a t-shirt and they want me to wear their t-shirt. And I'm like, no, well, why? Well, you didn't, you didn't, you're not paying me. <laughs> I'm wearing my brand. Mm -hmm. I'm wearing outlaw off-road. Yeah. I'm repping my brand and what I want to wear. Um, now flip side of that is, you know, where, why am I wearing a Columbia PFG shirt then? Or why am I wearing a Costa shirt or a North face shirt? Well, I went and bought that with my own money and I choose to wear that. Nobody at North face called me and said, you know, go buy this shirt and wear this shirt yeah. i chose to do that um i chose to buy that brand i like the way it looked i like the way it fit whatever i made that choice i'm going to wear that shirt if it has a logo on it, it has a logo on it so i kind of feel that way about it if mm -hmm. if you want to take pictures you want to do that thank you but I, you know yeah my hope is that you're doing that and i'm going to get more business off of it i'm trying to make money off of it uh you know because capitalism um, but I do see the post where, you know, like what you're talking about, everybody puts this on Facebook, it costs $0 for this and this and that. Well, okay, that's right. But it does cost people's time and they're doing something that they normally wouldn't do. So I would only say that I actually, I'm not a fan of that because it's not that I'm not a fan of it because I don't want them to do it, but I think I appreciate it more than most would, because I understand that, mm -hmm. you know, you're giving up your time to help push a brand that, that I, that I've put a lot of time into pushing and I really, really appreciate it. Um, but I certainly do not expect it. It's not like it's a tip these days, right? Where they put an iPad yeah. in front of you yeah, and go, sure. Oh, answer the question. Okay. I know what that means, right? Like, why yeah. am I tipping you for cashing me out at the taco store? Like what? <laughs> this makes no sense. Yeah. Um, no, if I got to stand up and order, I'm right. Not so I, you know, I kind of <laughs> look at it like that, where if somebody now, if somebody goes out of their way and, and they are an outstanding person and they went above and beyond, then yeah, a tip might be in order. And it's the same thing with mm -hmm. us. It's the same thing with anywhere. Um, you know, in, in our case, the tip would be the shout out, like you said, and I appreciate it greatly. And of course we ask for Google reviews and all of that. Anybody's going to, but I certainly don't expect it. And I do, I do see a lot of places like, they kind of get indignant about it. Like when people don't do. do that. And yeah. I'm like, eh, I just don't know that I would go that far. Do I love it when people do it? No, huh? absolutely. I wouldn't, I wouldn't go that Am far. Am I going to go on and Facebook and one... post that, that image? Hell no. I'm never going to yeah. do that. I'm never going to shame people. Oh, it costs $0 to do this. No shit. <laughs> you can bleep that later. Yeah. <laughs> I know that. I know it doesn't cost yeah. <laughs> anything, but I'm not going to use the social right. media platform that I have. To, to call people out for not pushing my brand no, and I'm not no, no, paying no, no, them no, to no, do no. it. I don't, but I do love it when yeah, they do it. I don't it. mean doing anything like that. Uh, and that's just one small segment of that. I know I use that as a strong example, but my whole point of that, it was not like, hey, shout, shout us on social media and be, you know, be our, our social media groupies. It, my my point more so is building a relationship with your, your off-road shop. Uh, having that as a place of, and a point of contact, like people who have started as customers and became friends of yours for sure. Uh, and a lot have, I know there, there are plenty, I, I know mm -hmm. there are plenty that outlaws had like that, that started as customers. We have shop owners that are, are started as customers. every single one of them. Um, every single one and of them. And every, yeah, every one of them. And 
So that's what I mean. Just having that relationship to be able to call your local shop, bullshit for a few minutes or stop in and just say, Hey guys, what's up? What's going on? Like what's new? Show me around. Like just having that person to person or that, that person to business relationship, uh, I think is a very strong, valuable thing in the community. And it's not just necessarily on social media. Social media could die tomorrow. Uh, but there's still a shop that has to be ran and there's still a business that has to go on. And that's where I believe personally that the, the relationship from a person and, and just developing that sense of community with a local shop, uh, is going to take over and it's not as much as, as so much as important as social media, but yeah. You know, well, and you know how I do rare that you. customer um, is. I definitely though. don't expect that. You know how yeah, rare. No, they're super rare. 95% yeah. are, they saw an ad on Facebook. They saw an ad on Google. They click to get a quote. We give them the quote, mm -hmm. they pay, they get the service and they leave. Yeah. I'm okay yeah, with absolutely. that. <laughs> I'm fine yeah. with that because the number of those coming in, um, you know, they're going to come in, they're going to, they're going to do what they got for their budget. <clears throat> and then we may never see them again. Now we want to, you know, come on back. We'll, you know, we'll rotate your tires for you. We'll change your brakes. We'll change your tires, whatever. We want you to come back. But I know that most of them aren't. Now, a lot of our marketing is geared at custom, what we call CRM or customer retention marketing. Um, mm -hmm. And that's a big piece of what we do. It's, it's equal to sometimes greater than um, customer acquisition, new customer acquisition. You know, we, we try very, very hard to split our efforts between customer acquisition and customer retention. So I want them. Mm -hmm. um, and like you said, every single outlaw offer a shop owner, save one, was a customer of outlaw first. Every single one of them. Again, say Ryan in Atlanta. Um, mm -hmm. But he was an employee. He was like the lead employee of the shop before it became an outlaw. So he was already kind of familiar with mm -hmm. outlaw. But literally to a man yeah. and a woman, every other every other one that operates an outlaw offered location was a customer first. So there's clearly a benefit, uh, clearly a benefit to that. Now it's a very low percentage, but it should be like, I don't have time to take, to give 20 customers a day to tour through the shop because they want to build a relationship. But right, those absolutely. are the customers that we want to build. The ones that want to build that relationship are the ones we want to build a relationship with. They're the ones that are buying multiple vehicles. They're doing multiple stages of the build, mm -hmm. not only because those are cool things um, and cool people that want to do that kind of stuff, but now you're talking about using that for marketing. And now you're talking about brand ambassadors. And now you're talking about the mm -hmm. customers that are going to shout you out and really being able to focus your CRM with those people uh, along with your traditional CRM stuff. Those are the people, the ones that want to build that relationship. Um, those are the ones you want to focus on. And, and it's not even because, you know, you want to build a relationship to get a discount. Certainly that could end up being a thing, but, if no, people want to help you and you call me in, you know, we got, we try very hard to treat all customers the same, whether they spend, you know, 200 or $200 or $20,000. But I would be mm -hmm. remiss to not admit that if a really, really, really good customer, especially one that I know personally calls me up with an issue and needs something that I'm not going to step in where I normally wouldn't and try to make something happen for that mm -hmm. customer. Yeah, um, for sure. You know, that is somebody who's, you know, they could have gone anywhere else and they chose outlaw. Um, yeah. You know, they, you know, they, they could have done something else. They could have gone somewhere else. They could have bought something else, but they didn't. They came to us. They trusted us. They bought what we recommended. And that means something to me, at least. Mm -hmm. And I know it does to the other off-road shop owners too, outside of Outlaw and, and outside in manufacturers, if you're loyal to a brand, that means something. Um, so I'd say your relationship, not even just with your local off-road shop, but with brands too. You go to shows, you see the same people. Yeah. Uh, you go to off-road yeah. shops, you see the same people, that kind of stuff. So if, if you're that type of person that, is going to frequent a place like that, an off-road shop. You know, I do the same thing at the bike shop. You know, people do stuff mm -hmm. in different areas. Um, you know, I, I think that's very, very good, and it's something that's missing these days, unfortunately. But on the flip side of that, you got to roll with it too because that's just the market we live in now. That that yeah, customer is sure. so rare. Um, you just kind of got to be like, you can look at the days of yesteryear and days past, like, hmm, I sure wish, but, you know, those days are they're kind of gone and you just kind of got to deal with it, adapt and move on. Yeah. So yeah, that's where I'm at. On I that. get it. It's just, that's my soapbox is I, I like it. I appreciate it. And uh, I'd like to see more of it, but I, I do agree with you. It is very rare to find that person. Um, but you know, they're out there and I'm actually going out, out to lunch with one here. of those people today. <laughs> There you go. I am go. We are going out to lunch yeah. today. Going out to lunch to talk about other, you know, basically stuff. But 
Um, yeah. The guy I'm going out to lunch with today start, is a customer, is a very, very good customer, yeah. uh, and not a brand ambassador. Yeah. There's no, you know, there's no big outlaw logo on the side of his Jeep or his truck. Um, mm -hmm. But it started out as, you know, kind of being a half customer, half wheeling buddy. And, you know, now it's friends. And I've gone over to his house and spent, you know, Memorial Days in the pool and, you know, cookouts with the friends and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, again, going out to lunch with them today. So you never know what that's going to, you never know what that relationship is going to turn into. Yeah, absolutely. I think we can, uh, I think, I mean, I, we just got onto my opinions. I didn't really even get into your opinions and we're already at 45 See? minutes here. So mm -hmm. this might have to be a two-parter because I definitely want to hear your, uh, you know, new, new beginner opinions and not just your take on my opinions. Um, so what do you say we do a, a two-parter and split this one in and uh, you got more? catch back up next week? You got more? I think okay. I might right. have a couple more, okay. but I would like to hear what, what yours are. Well, I know that I know uh, we I mean, were kind of worried about it going over today with, you know, with doing that. But, you know, yeah, let's do that. Let's do let's break this up into two parts because I'm just looking at the the topics that we were going to talk about. It's definitely, definitely another episode. Plus, I got something that we got to, you know, we got to talk about a little bit today. So um, with that, we'll end that part of the episode. We will, you know, we'll hit the new the noob stuff. Um, we'll take that into next Wednesday. So this will be part one. Uh, we'll have a part two next mm -hmm. week. But with that being finished up, as promised, we want to talk a little bit about um, Outlaw Off-Road Trail Days, which is our thing we've decided to do at Windrock uh, in September. That is going to be the weekend of uh, September 14th. Um, that is going to be, it's going to be Wheeling Days will be Friday, September 13th, uh, Saturday, September 14th. We are playing with the idea of like a kickoff party on that Thursday for anybody who comes in early and then also maybe a little quick small thing um, on Sunday for the people that stick around understanding that people may use Sunday as a travel day um, to go home, which mm -hmm. is perfectly fine. But those main wheeling days will be on Friday and Saturday. We are currently looking at, and again, more details to come, but we are currently looking at um, probably looking at four groups. Um, it will either be four groups or five. Um, obviously there'll be one group that's going to be the dummies. You always got to have the group for the dummies. And then depending on um, kind of how much it is the East Coast, I don't want a lot of rigs on each group. I don't want to go more than eight to ten. So you're probably talking about eight vehicles yeah. plus one gunner or one leader and one tail gunner, which is ten vehicles, mm -hmm. which is about as much as I'd want on a tight tree laden, you know, East Coast trail, especially if it gets wet. Um, yeah. You know, for, and for me, from a trail leader spot, it helps me not have to drive a half a mile past an obstacle to come back to spot people. All I have to do is drive far enough to get, you know, nine rigs up behind me. So that's probably what we're mm -hmm. going to do. Uh, if we do four groups, it would be one beginner, probably one beginner group, two intermediate, and then like an advanced. Uh, and then we might add a fifth group, which would be maybe two beginner, uh, two intermediate, and then one advanced. And we could even add that beginner into, you know, bone stock. You know, if you're bone stock yeah. and you want to come out there and see what you can do, um, I am going to leave open that possibility. Um, it is the event, um, will be third, like I said, Friday and Saturday. Um, well, I, you know, I think I know where I want to do the kickoff thing at. We'll see if that works, but I wanted to go ahead and at least get the dates out there so that people could start talking about that. We are going to limit this event when the spots are full, yeah. they will be full. There's not going to be any application yeah. process like that. I know there's some events out there that make you apply and, you know, kind of drive hype or whatever. We're not doing that. Um, no. If there is space to sign up and you meet the criteria for the group, you're in. That That's just all there is to it. Um, you know, you will be responsible. Obviously, it's Windrocks. So you're going to pay your trail fees. You're not going to pay outlaw offer. I'm not going to charge you, um, at least from the outlaw standpoint. Um to come on the ride we are working with a charity to maybe do something on that end more information on that later um i am working very very tirelessly right now to get information settled locked in details done so that maybe on uh this week's friday episode we can give more details but i at least wanted to give people mm -hmm. the heads up that yes we are doing it it is a thing we've teased it we've yeah. talked about it but no it's a thing it is going to be at windrock it is going to be those two days we are going to have beginner groups all the way to advanced groups uh, and it is going to happen for sure. We are definitely going to be there. So we'll have sign up forms. We'll get all that stuff worked out. But I want to let people know, go ahead and know that that is a thing. So um, definitely wanted to get that out there. More information to come on that. So 
start making your plans now. Um, yeah, that's going to be a fun time. I think so. I'm, I think I'm so. really looking forward to that. We've gotten um, away from it, man. I was on the phone with Gerald yesterday in Huntsville, and he's like, you know, that used to be the – that's the best part of being outlaw. We used to wheel all that. I was like, dude, you're not wrong. Like, it's just yeah. been – the racing – I was like, I haven't really – you know, I did – I haven't really just wheeled with people. And yeah. I really enjoyed mob like that, 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 that reminded yeah. me of that. And, you know, I want to kind of get out of that industry wheeling. The racing has really messed me up just because it's racing, but that's not wheeling with people. Yeah. I just want to wheel with yeah. people again. And I may, hell, I may even take the beginner group, you know, go back to my roots and start leading beginner groups. You know, usually I take yeah. advanced intermediate. I used to take the the dummies when I had Reaper and didn't care about doing dummy body damage things. Now I'm, I'm not doing that. I'll let some <laughs> other idiot who wants to do body damage. Um, but yeah, I'm super, yeah. super excited about it. Looking forward to it. Can't wait to get back out there. Um, needs to happen. Absolutely needs to happen. I know a ton of it outlaw does. rigs are going to be there. Last count was gonna be like 13 or 14. Um, so mm -hmm. keep that in mind when we start talking about groups, because a fair amount is going to be outlaw rigs. So if I say five groups yeah. of 10, you're really only going to have about 35 spots because <laughs> Outlaw rigs are probably going to lead and tail gun every single freaking group. So that's going to leave. I would imagine. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. And a lot of us have a ton of experience at Windrock. There was a long, there was a couple of years in a row there where Windrock was basically my second home. Um, yeah. You know, I know a lot of people. Um, I know a lot of people that, that feel that way. And outlaw, you know, Candace from Nashville, same way. She knows it really, Still really well. All the time. Yeah. Josh from Charlotte mm -hmm. knows Windrock really well. Um, John Bambin from Gulf Coast knows Windrock really, really well. And there's a lot of us that have wheeled, spent a lot of hours on those trails. Um, and even to this day can talk about the map without having the map. Like we just know that place. Yeah. Uh, and it's a great spot. Yeah, absolutely. It's huge. It's wide open. We can have those groups out there. Um, we will be talking. I will be talking to Windrock about getting us our own little, our own little area and all that kind of stuff, you know, where we can meet up and maybe do a tent or we can, we can do our driver's meetings in the morning. So um, obviously those details will be forthcoming, but I just wanted to let everybody know that that's what's going to happen uh, the 13th, 14th, and then maybe some book in stuff Thursday night or Sunday morning, but for sure going to be mm -hmm. wheeling on Friday the 13th, um, which might not be the smartest thing I ever did to wheel on Friday the 13th <laughs> and Saturday, Saturday the 14th. Right. Um, and we will probably, my intention right now is to bring both of the Jeeps, bring both the 4 by e and 4699, the race car. Uh, we'll see. Cool. It's uh, got to be at Crandon two weeks before then. So if I don't send it into mm -hmm. oblivion, then um, I might I might bring it. I might bring it. Yeah. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, the goal is, um, well, definitely to have the LJ done way before then. But, yeah, I would love to have the LJ out there and maybe even use that as like the 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 run and gun media vehicle because I'm, I definitely know I'm going to be out there filming and, getting some media for us because that's going to be a fun time and i want i want to showcase yeah. that uh but i'm very much looking forward to that looking forward to other trail days i know again once the lj is done I, i've already told josh to charlotte like you give me the the green light and, and <laughs> go ahead and i'll take a group to uari like yeah. well we need to get back into into wheeling because at, at outlaws core that is oh that yeah is the root for of sure outlaw is, is wheeling and and building that off-road community in that aspect too so I would love to get back to it. Uh, like life has just got super busy the last couple of years. It's kind of gotten well, <laughs> and I mean, I got rid of Reaper, then we'll I built the Gladiator, but that wasn't an off-road mm -hmm. vehicle. And then I bought the race car and I went racing. And I've spent a lot of time in four-wheel drive, but I haven't been mm -hmm. just just wheeling with folks. You know, we used yeah. to do those events all the time, so we're going to be getting back to that. I've talked to Jeremy, but we talked about it after the episode too about you know doing the events and and focusing it on just getting out there with the people, right? Like doing mm -hmm. epic crap. But doing it, bringing people along for the ride. So can't wait to do it. Yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah. So more information on that probably Friday. Worst case scenario, next Wednesday's yeah. episode. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. How how quick I can get things locked in and conversations within within Outlaw and then also with Windrock Park and and getting that all done. So, but no, that's coming. Those those are days that are going to happen. The thirteenth and fourteenth of September at Windrock Park in Oliver Springs, Tennessee, right outside of Oak Ridge, which is right outside of Knoxville. For those of you who don't know epic place and and don't be afraid to think about it if you're if you're stock and you want to see what your vehicle can do because i have done many stock rides at windrock and there's a lot oh, of yeah. very very cool trails that won't hurt your jeep they'll get it dirty mm -hmm. uh, but we're not talking about body damage we're not talking about breaking stuff just very very cool stuff to show you both what your jeep is capable of doing in the real world mm -hmm. and what you as a driver are, are capable of doing which i think is super cool to see the difference Absolutely. in people from the first morning 
to the last evening when we're done and we're getting oh, tacos yeah. and drinking beer and trail stories and trail stories are amazing. So can't wait to get some more of those. Haven't had, haven't had many of those, hadn't had enough of those in the last year or two. So looking forward to getting back out there. Um, I'm probably going to bring at least the wife with me, may bring the whole family um, and just get back, get back to what, get back to being outlaws. So can't wait for it. Can't wait for it. Yeah. It's going to be a good time yeah, for sure. So that's where we will, uh, we'll leave it right there for today. As Caleb said, we will bring this back up with a part two next week. So make sure to tune in for that. Uh, as we ask you to tune in every Wednesday for another episode of dirt to dust, along with our special episodes and, or our mailbags on Friday, our shorter, uh, you know, 20, 30 minute episodes where we answer your questions, comment on your comments. And maybe we, maybe we talk to some of the people who drink the uh, lemon, lime, or fruit punch haterade every once in a while. Those are some fun ones, too. So uh, we thank all of you for tuning in and watching or listening. However you find us, Spotify, YouTube, YouTube podcast, Apple, whatever, wherever, we thank all of you. Please, please, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell on YouTube so you know when the next episodes are dropping. Again, those are every Wednesday and every Friday. But hit the bell anyway, people, because they drop at different times. Every platform is different. They're all weird. They got their own algorithms. We're just here playing the game the way they're making us play it. So that's where we'll leave it uh, this week. Again, we thank everybody for tuning in. Don't forget to tune in next week. Don't forget to tune in Friday. Tune in every week. Watch us more. Listen to us more. Tell your friends. Tell your dog. Tell your cat. Tell your goldfish. Tell everybody <laughs> about Dirt to Dust. Thank you all, yeah. and we will see you on the next episode. You've been listening to the Dirt to Dust. Presented by Outlaw Off-Road. The premier off-road centers for Jeeps, trucks, and SUVs. Sounds a little bit arrogant, doesn't it? Oh, well. We hope you've enjoyed the show. Make sure to like, rate, and review. Be sure to tell your friends about the show, too. We'll be back soon. But in the meantime, to see more and to see what Outlaw Off-Road offers... Hit the website at theoutlawoffroad.com. See you next time. Don't follow us. You're not going to make it.